please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Now, lots lined up over the next 30 minutes, but first, uh, let's get to the top story that we are breaking at this hour. Budget 2018 has dashed our hopes. Strong statements coming in from the Vice Chief of the Army, Lieutenant General Sarat Chand, to the Parliamentary Panel on Defence. Now, CNBC TV 18 has access his oral deposition to the panel in which he claims that the budget allocation for defence leaves them with a shortfall of over 12,000 crore rupees. Now, responding to his deposition, the Parliamentary Panel has said that it is a has to note this dismal scenario. Rituparna Bhuyan is here with more details on this news break. Ritu, this is a very rare situation. Take us through the deposition that was made by the Vice Chief of the Army and what were the comments uh, that came in by the parliamentary panel? This uh, deposition that the uh, Vice Chief of Army staff made, uh, uh, in fact, is one of the strongest statements, statements emanating from Army headquarters. Uh, the background is uh, the discussion on the uh, budgetary allocations made uh, for uh, the Defence uh, Ministry, within which uh, you know Army, Navy, and Air Force gave their views as well, specifically on capital, uh, uh, the, 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 the capital budget through which uh, the, the Army, Navy, and Air Force actually buys new equipment. Uh, uh, as you said, uh, the, the uh, Vice Chief of Army staff talked about how. Uh, budget 2018-19 dashed its hopes regarding reforms that were carried out through DPP and other proc procurement related procedures which the uh, Defence Ministry had initiated. Uh, uh, explaining further, he talked about how the budgetary uh, budget allocation for the Army, for example, uh, barely accounts for the inflation and the tax dues of the, of the Army as far as uh, you know, the, the liabilities that it will have to pay for, new, uh, for acquisition of new platforms. Uh, uh, he uh, went on to talk about how uh, there are about 125 ongoing programs uh, for which uh, uh, payment is already committed and uh, the modernization budget uh, through, capi through, through, through uh, capital acquisition. Whatever allocation have, has been made is not enough uh, for FY19. Uh, uh, he uh, then also talks about how uh, the Army was uh, planning around 25 Make in India related projects through which uh, indigenous defense uh, platforms would have been manufactured uh, in India. Uh, on that, uh, he's saying that, you know, uh, many of those uh, may may end up uh, being foreclosed because of the uh, because of the you know uh, uh, of the of the budgetary allocations that the finance ministry has made. Uh, in fact, giving specific examples, he's talked about the futuristic uh, infantry combat vehicle, for example, saying that he doesn't know uh, when this uh, this uh, uh, you know uh, uh, this 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 program will now uh, be completed because the process has not even started and the kind of budgetary allocations that have been made will not be enough to cover up uh, for programs like these. Uh, uh, you know, noting these, uh, uh, you know, uh, comments, uh, the parliamentary panel on its part uh, said that it's aghast uh, by the by the by the uh, scene as far as uh, the allocations that have been made by the finance ministry uh, and has uh, asked the finance ministry to increase or pump up uh, at least uh, the, the 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 capital portion of the defence budget uh, so that uh, you know army can have uh, more money in its kitty okay. to buy new platforms. Mm. Uh, uh, this is because uh, if you look at the calculations made by the right. by the by the by the parliamentary panel there's a shortfall of 17,757 crores okay. only of the army for air force it is 41,924 okay. crores for navy it's around 15,691 crores as far as the projected demand and the the kind of allocation right. that was made for capital acquisition okay Ritu, thanks for breaking that up for us uh, in fact we now have defense analyst ajay shukla joining in on the phone line and shireen man is here to take us through that interview shireen take it away well, thanks very much, Ajay. Appreciate you joining us here on CNBC TV 18. Uh, uh, it is a voluminous report, and we are, of course, uh, pointing out for our viewers what the report. Uh, in, this is the oral deposition of the Vice Chief of the Army Staff to the Parliamentary Panel. Says uh, there are several issues that the Vice Chief has raised there. Let me start by talking to you about the budget allocation, and I'm quoting verbatim from the report: "The budget of 2018-19 has dashed our hopes, and most of what has been achieved has actually received a little setback." To highlight a few cases, the marginal increase in BE, which is the budget estimate, barely accounts for the inflation and does not even cater for the taxes. Allocation of 21,338 crores for modernization is insufficient even to cater for committed payment of 29,033 crores for 125 ongoing schemes and emergency procurement. Your first reaction to what you're hearing, Ajay Shukla? Uh, well, I have to say I'm not even slightly surprised. This this is, uh, has become a practice now. Uh, the way that the budget uh, exercise goes, uh, goes along 
is that around October or so, the military, that's the three services, the Army, Navy, and the Air Force, project their demands for capital funds based on uh, the projects that they have in hand already, for which ongoing payments, which are, which are called committed liabilities, are made and budgeted for. And to that, they add uh, the, the, the procurements that they intend to conclude during the coming year uh, and, uh, you know, the payments that they would be required to make towards the advance payments for those, for those new projects. Uh, what happens every year, however, is that the figure that uh, the military allocates, the, the military projects to the Ministry of Defense, uh, it then goes to the Ministry of Finance, which routinely cuts and slashes uh, significant chunks of money mm. from, that, from that carefully calculated and tabulated fund. So the three services are every yeah. year. This happens every year. They are left with far less money than they require. And then uh, that is compensated mm. for during the course of the year by the defense ministry's incompetence and its inability to be able to conclude any of those contracts that, uh, that they have budgeted for or that the military initially mm. asked for money for. And therefore, at the end, they sometimes end up not even spending the reduced sum of money that they have allocated. Okay, so you're saying that you're not surprised by this and this is a routine that uh, the demands that are made by the armed forces are not catered to by the finance ministry. But, uh, you know, be that as it may, Ajay, if you were to take a look at defense expenditure and as a percentage of GDP, expenditure in this budget is down to 1.5% versus 1.8% the previous year. So it's actually been declining year on year as well, Ajay. Oh, yes, of course it has been declining year on year as a percentage of GDP and as a percentage of government spending. Uh, but that's, uh, that's the government's call to make. Uh, I, I would only prefer, as a defense analyst, if the government told the military front and center that we don't have the money to spend on defense and therefore tailor your expectations and don't count on concluding uh, X, Y, or Z contract. Uh, because hmm. we don't have the money to support that. But they don't do that. They say, go ahead with concluding those contracts. The army in its planning assumes that it's getting that kind of money. Uh, but at the end, when the budgetary allocations are made, the money is not there. And then over the course of the year, the ministry, the mili uh, ministry ensures that the contracts are not concluded either. Yeah. Now, just to give you a, a figure of what uh, the background is to what the vice chief was saying, uh, this year... They've still got a significant chunk of money. Last year, they had projected for 42,486 crores, the army had projected, out of which they were allocated only 25,246 crores. So they got 40% less than what they, had been, what they had projected. So it, it, there's a culture of, hmm. of sort of poverty and slippage in the Ministry of Defense procurement that is very regrettable and that is, does not make at all for good defense planning. Okay, since we're speaking about defense planning and defense preparedness, I want to talk about the other two issues that the vice chief has brought up in his oral deposition. Uh, let me start by asking you about what he says on Make in India. Uh, he says, we in the army have identified as many as 25 projects for Make in India. However, there is not adequate budget to support this, as a result of which many of these may end up foreclosed. Ajay. Now that, that's, that's an absolute shame because the Make procedure is uh, the bedrock of indigenization. It's a procedure in which domestic defense companies uh, uh, engage in R&D for very badly needed projects like the future infantry combat vehicle that the Army Vice Chief spoke about. Uh, and that money is reimbursed, the R&D money is reimbursed to the extent of 80 to 90 percent by the ministry. Now, this creates uh, R&D, it creates uh, domestic... Uh, or indigenous defense platforms. It is the bedrock of make in India, and to not support it actually amounts to going against the, the Prime Minister's sort of favorite initiative, which is make in India. And the Prime Minister has said that defense will be one of the four pillars of make in India. But when it comes to actually supporting it with budget, uh, the finance ministry just turns around and says we don't have the money. So, I mean, policy is one thing, budgetary mm. support to that policy is another, and I, the two have a huge chasm in between them. Mm -hmm. Speaking about the, the misalignment between policy as well as uh, 
future projects. And I want to talk to you about uh, the other policy decision that was taken by the government, which the vice chief has, uh, has uh, complimented, which is the strategic partnership, which allows a foreign company to partner with an Indian company to make larger platforms like aircraft, submarine, etc. But then he goes on to say, in the army, we're looking forward to manufacturing the future-ready combat vehicle, the FRCVs and the FICVs, through these schemes. However, with the kind of budget that has been allocated, this may get delayed by a few years. I'm not sure what is going to be their future. Where does this leave us, Ajay? Uh, that's exactly the point. I mean, to, you know, the, the, the problem with defense uh, indigenous R&D is that it has to be supported with money. If, it, if there are no budgetary allocations, then one can keep talking as much as one likes about FICB and FRCB. But unless somebody puts the money down on the table and provides the military an assurance of funding, uh, uh, that, that uh, project is never going to get off the ground. So the Army Vice Chief is absolutely right in saying that uh, there's going to be a delay, maybe not a delay of many years, but certainly this year the, the money is not there to fund. And unless the, the uh, Ministry of Defense and the Ministry of Finance come together at the middle of the year and make an interim allocation to fund this, uh, you're going to find a lot of these programs, very important programs like FICV and FRCV and the other strategic partner programs, including the, the single-engine fighter program, uh, a helicopter program. Uh, where is the money for all of this? If they don't even have money to pay for the committed liabilities that they're inheriting from the year before, how are they going to fund all these new projects? I'll end then by asking you, uh, you know, the committee in its, uh, in its assessment, in its conclusion says, and I'm again quoting, we are aghast to note this dismal scenario where the representatives of the services themselves frankly explain the negative repercussions on our defense preparedness due to inadequate allocation in the capital head. And as you pointed out, the ratio of capital and revenue outlay uh, has been declining revenue. The capital component of the budgetary allocation has consistently been decreasing, uh, in fact, from 2012-13 onwards. But let me end then by asking you, in the context of what we're seeing with China, with the kind of defense budget that China has just uh, announced, and where we are today, and what the committee has concluded as far as our own uh, situation is concerned, how worried would you be? Oh, well, I, I mean, uh, there's, there's uh, sort of uh, no point in our comparing ourselves with China. China has four times our GDP, three times our defense budget, but more important than that, they set targets, they make allocations to fund those targets, and they function in a coherent manner. What you are seeing from this report uh, that, you, that you sort of broke just now uh, is that there is no coherence in the planning. There is no budgetary support given to promises that uh, the ministry is making to industry. So all in all, this would leave both industry, the military, and as it turns out, the Parliamentary Standing Committee on Defense with a deep sense of disappointment. Uh, because they simply are not, the ministry is not backing its promises with words. But all I can say is that the Parliamentary Standing Committee, this is not the first time they've encountered this problem. Year no, after year, not. they issue scathing sure. denunciations of the Ministry of Defense for not funding uh, capital procurement adequately. But every year, it turns out to be just the same story all over again as it has turned out to be this year. Absolutely, and I'll end then by highlighting that the committee notes that 2012-13 onwards, the capital component of the budgetary allocation has consistently decreased in comparison to the revenue component of the budget, and that was the point that Ajay Shukla was highlighting. Ajay, appreciate you joining us here on CNBC TV 18 to get us uh, a reaction to this story, but of course we will uh, connect with you shortly again as we take this conversation forward. For now, Kritika, it's back to you. All right, Shireen, thank you so much for that interview. We will take a very short break, though, but up next, it was a flat close to the volatile day of trade on the last eight. We will get your detailed analysis after this very short commercial break. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back. Yes, with After the Bell on CNBC TV 18. Let's do a very quick check of today's trading action. It was a volatile day on the Lal Street, and indices paired 
early gains to end at low points of the day. So if you look at the Nifty, that opened higher but failed to sustain at higher levels. The index, uh, in fact, ended absolutely flat with a slight positive bias. Sensex shed almost 62 points today. The mid caps outperformed though with gains of about four fifths of a percent. PSU Bank Index was the star in today's trading session with that index gaining over 2%. Anuj Singhal is here to decode the day straight further for us. Anuj, what does the market texture really look like now? Consolidation setting in, but you know, some indices and some segments are standing out. Well, extremely volatile day for the market today, but the good thing was that the mid caps were rallying. Good thing for the bulls, of course, and for retail investors. Uh, the Nifty and Bank Nifty, they slipped from the high point, though towards then there was some recovery in those as well. Uh, Stock of the day today was TCS. Promoters selling some stake. The market didn't like it. Of course, it didn't fall much after opening lower, but 5% lower is where it ended. There was no recovery at all in TCS. Uh, in terms of stocks that lost ground today, Kotak, Mahindra and & Mahindra and Lassen and & Tubro. While on the gaining side, it was all about OMCs, all marketing companies, HP and BP in particular, IOC, uh, much more muted in the gains. Axis Bank, Sun Pharma and ICICI Bank were the other big gainers. PSU banks had a big move today and really big. Andhra Bank, Bank of India, Union Bank, I can go on and on. Uh, each and every PSU bank today was up mostly on short covering. And finally, we had some big FNO gainers like PC Jeweler, Chennai Petro, NBCC, Godfrey Phillips, Balram Puccini, and IFCI. All in all, uh, you'll have to say that uh, it was a volatile day, but uh, the market breadth is something that the bulls would take a lot of confidence from. Okay, so there is some hope there as far as bulls are concerned in the long term. But uh, Anuj, thanks for taking us through that. We will have to take a very, very short break on that note. But up next, as we heard now from Anuj, PSU Bank outperforms in today's trade. What drove them? We will give you details on the other side. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back. Now let's get stock specific. The Nifty PSU Bank Index has surged close to 2% today. This at the back of some much needed good news from the sector. The surge was led by the Bank of India stock which jumped to almost 12%. And this is largely at the back of news that the bank has recovered 7,000 crore rupees of loans that were categorized as non-performing. Sources say that the recovery is related to standby letters of credit that have been discounted by the bank in an exclusive conversation with CNBC TV 18, the bank's MD and CEO, Deena Bandhu Mohapatra, said that they expect to recover another 2,000 crore rupees worth of bad loans over the next two months. We also spoke to PSJ Kumar, MD and CEO, Bank of Baroda. He expects recovery risk on account of NCLT issues not being settled on time, but largely expects asset quality to remain stable. Here are those comments. Have you all managed to recover 7,000 crore rupees uh, this year uh, uh, from Jan onwards? Yes, yes. Yes, in the meantime, we have recovered around 7,000 crores. Okay. So that will be reflected in this uh, quarter's uh, performance. Okay. okay. And you may do more? Uh, yes, some other also expected to be recovered. So in the next couple of months, how much do you think you can recover? Another two, three 3,000 crores? Uh, I hope so. I hope so. Q1, Q2 will be very good, I know. But this Q4 will be, we are still uh, calculating on the numbers. You know, because of this, we are just discussing with different promoters and persuading them to recover whatever um, overdue amount. Okay. So that will depend on the, on the entire process. But Q1, I know you see all these big accounts, NCLT accounts are expected to be reserved in Q1. And we are expecting a huge write back on that account. We have about, uh, as disclosed, about 9,000 crores of SDR in S4A. I hope, I mean, I don't think all of them will flow in. We can assume a majority will flow. That doesn't matter. Then the next year, we should expect a 12 to 15 percent return on equity on the enhanced capital, at least from uh, Bank of Baroda's side is concerned. The risk to the recovery is in two parts. Part one is some of the NCLT issues don't get settled in the time frame we expect them to, which is the first quarter of next year and the second quarter of, uh, uh, of next year, and maybe something towards the end of this month. Positivity is first and foremost that the steel and the cement sector recoveries seems to suggest that we will have a reversal of provision. That's a positive thing. Okay, take a look at the flashes on your screen. The Supreme Court uh, has extended the Aadhaar linkage deadline from March 31st till its final verdict 
on the issue. This is all we know at this point in time. We don't know what uh, the exact uh, grounds were on which Supreme Court has said this. But yes, the deadline has been extended for other linkages, which is something that many people who, of course, uh, would be happy about given the fact that March 31st is just around the corner. The What we have so far is also that they have extended the deadline till the Constitution bench delivers judgment on the matter. So till there isn't any clarity on what the Constitution bench has to say on this matter, they will be reserving their final judgment. So all we know is that uh, the extension has come in. We don't know till when this is being extended. It will be extended till the Constitution bench delivers their final judgment on the matter. We will get Ashmit Kumar a little later on the show to give us clarity and exactly what transpired in Supreme Court today. But for now, we will wrap up this edition of After the Bell. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned to CNBC TV 18. Markets Today Talkback will take all the market action forward on the other side.